When I am in distress and I feel the fog closing in on me, I need to remind myself of why am I here and ask myself, remind myself, what gives meaning to my presence on this earth in this moment, okay? Now you can describe this as mission or purpose, okay? And uh, it can be, uh, it's, it's not meant in my, in my workings through myself necessarily uh, enormous. It can be smaller. You know, my purpose is to touch a student, all right? But a reminder of that of that other bigger picture. And what it does for me is we, we, talk, we started this conversation about you know, the ego or whatever you wanna call it. Ego may not be the right descriptor, but those things that are essential in us that help us cope, that are the dynamics that give us the tools to respond, react, and uh, internally, okay? The selfish parts of us. And uh, how, to, uh, how to recognize that they are there, but also remember that that's a very small part of us and how to expand our horizon. And actually, if you since we're talking about organizations, an important part, I found an important part of the role that me and my co-founder had in the company was to continue to remind ourselves and remind the company, why are we doing this? Okay, where do we wanna make an impact? And is the impact of an import that makes us all feel good about the eight, 10, 15 hours we spend on this company, okay? Are we excited about our endeavor? And what, what broader good does it do? What is, the, what, is the, what is the broader good? And I, you know, that may, sound pretty, you know, and it, when you speak that way, you're talking about big picture. It's good to keep that big picture in mind because we are inevitably and very quickly driven to the specifics and driven down to solve the, the, the immediate problems, which are innumerable and have to be solved. We, we have to move forward, okay? How do we keep that broader picture? And one of the roles that I often have said the leader has, or when we are in our leadership role, is to absorb. We are, up, we are, we are uncertainty absorbers, all right? And what I mean by that is because we are uh, at the point of experience that we have been looking at all the, at, at many of the broader elements of the endeavor and presumably have digested a good piece of it. We have a vantage point that not everybody else in the company has. And in fact, we hire or we attract participants in our company that have other vantage points. And in fact, often, hopefully, much better than ours, okay? We, are, we engage specialists that are much better in the particular different tasks. And so I see the, the leader's role, this, the, the leader's role as 
absorbing the uncertainty of the big components to permit those who are absorbing the uncertainty of their component to not be distracted. Case in point, you know, companies, entrepreneurial companies, one of the biggest issues is do not run out of cash. Never run out of cash. Okay, cash is, you know, what's my bank account is crucial because when you get down to that narrow slip, I mean, everything changes. So you're always thinking, okay, how do I keep my runway? It is, it is counterproductive to have a scientist chartered with solving the difficult technical scientific problems with being having to look at the runway length financially where in fact they can't do anything about it okay and the moment they are looking at that at the financial suddenly pressure comes on them fog why that's not their domain okay that's not their that's not their their expertise so you want to have the scientist you know feel unrestrained in solving the technical problem all right and so in a sense i'm absorbing that uncertainty so we absorb uncertainty and of course the question is uh who absorbs our uncertainty, okay? And this is part of what we're talking about. You know, how does a leader cope with the fog and their own pressures? But our, our requirement is to absorb the broad uncertainty. To do that, we have to keep in mind, why are we doing this? And if there is a meaningful purpose, like, I am helping, I'm doing my part to solve the climate crisis. I'm doing my part to see how my grandchildren and great grandchildren can live in a world that has energy that is not polluting the world, okay? That is an enormous driving force. We forget about it when we're hit with all of this details with the everydayness. So Bob, a long answer to your question. That is the, the challenge of looking at the bigger mission. You know, Jerry Anderson is a, uh, has been for a number of years the CEO at DTE Energy. And in 2008, the financial crisis hit and they went into a big tailspin and the crisis became his. He was boiling in the uncertainty. And um, it was the beginning of an experience a lot like yours. And Jerry was reborn, if you will. He took a new perspective. He grew. One small point in that process was a visit he made to USAA Insurance. General Joe Roby was the CEO. And Jerry, he was on the board at DTE. And so Jerry was invited to come make a visit and he went to the call centers and he was stunned. The call center people were smiling. They were all engaged, they were cooperative. They were, he said, it was just a joy to walk into that room. And he says, we had call centers. I know what a call center looks like. It doesn't look like that. So as he came out of those call centers, he said to Joe Roby, um, you got to explain this to me. And so there was a moment of silence. And finally, Joe looked at Jerry and he said, the first responsibility of a CEO is to continually connect the people to the purpose. Mm 